Welcome to the Humanoid Fireside. Today's topic is uh, cryptography and biometric identification, or cryptobiometrics. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, of course, there's Dado and I here, but the special guest is our lead crypto cryptographer, uh, Rafa. Rafa, are you here? Yeah, hi. How are you? Hey, Rafa. Welcome to Fireside. So, Thanks. Uh, happy, happy to be here. Yeah, so let's uh, get this ball rolling here. And um, I first and foremost, uh, Rafa, for are you not everybody here is a mathematician or a cryptographer. Um, I mean, all I know how to decode is uh, my wife and daughter's mood. So if you can give us a brief overview of cryptography and perhaps a little bit about the history and uh, uh, yeah, where it is today, uh, it would be great. Sure. Um, well, cryptography, it's a branch of um, computer science, but also it is uh, highly influenced by mathematics. So um, the history of cryptography, it's uh, way beyond our computation because uh, uh, from the minute we have uh, information, we need to protect it, right? So uh, in since the beginning of the writings uh, in the human history, we have the need to protect what we want to share with others. So um, this need uh, have evolved in the history, but uh, uh, right now it, it has quite interesting topics from mathematics, uh, algebra, number theory and um, yeah basically that um, especially uh, number theory and right now um, the cryptography um, takes uh, what is cryptography cryptography is uh, a science a branch of computer science that help us to protect information basically so we are not only talking about um, how works cryptocurrency but in general how the information is protected uh, from the minute you log into a mail account or anything you're using cryptography so uh, yep okay then in simple terms um when we're talking biometric identification mm -hmm. uh, so how does cryptography uh, apply to biometric identification yeah mm, you want to protect the identity of the user so uh, this is a secret you want to keep away from others so uh, in, in cryptography you use uh, mathematic uh, tools to modify the information so others uh, when others intercept this information it is not uh, readable so in biometric the, it is the same case because we have a, a biometric data like for example a photo from you and this photo you want to keep it uh, in your own computer and not share it with others and this uh, is also a piece of information and we add uh, cryptography to that so this is a, a secret to protect but in, in our case um, in human node we are not only using uh, cryptography but also machine learning and neural network applications and we are doing a mix of these technologies to protect the information uh, uh, we are adding uh, stuff like differential privacy and any others like zero knowledge proof 
to make the things private. It just just for uh, some information when you say uh, zero knowledge, um, mm -hmm. what are you implying? Okay, let's imagine that you have, um, there is a, a very interesting problem in cryptography that it's called the millionaire problem. Um, let's imagine that you have a, you are a millionaire. Um, I am also a millionaire. And we want to know which of us it's, uh, have the bigger amount of um, money, but we don't want to share the exact amount of money. And then we agree on some protocols that we can share this secret, but without revealing the secret. And this protocol right now, it's called uh, one way to do it. It's zero knowledge because we are not revealing the actual knowledge of the secret. And this is possible because there is some specific cryptography tools to do that. So this is quite very interesting. In our case, the secret is not the amount of money, but the, the biometric data. So we want to make calculation with this biometric data without revealing the data. And this is zero knowledge. I see. Okay, so um, perhaps we're going a little in depth here, but uh, how does privacy work in a neural network? Yeah, a neural network uh, works with layers. So we have several layers and each layer have functions. And we want to these functions to make a bunch of calculations uh, until they can get to a point where they predict a data. This is trying it and then we test it and that's how it works neural network in general. So we are uh, adding um, not only zero knowledge, but also several other cryptographic um, stuff in each layer. So we are not calculating uh, directly the data, but also some modificate, some data that is modificated. And we are still working with the biometric data, but not exactly uh, without revealing. So if anyone get to know the, the, the data from these uh, layers in the neural network, they can't learn anything about it, but um, the neural network, it is still working and making the prediction. Are there any specific type of technologies that we're using that uh, is open to the public or? Yeah, actually all the um, information is open to the public. Uh, we are uh, taking the information from papers that are public and all available to the public and these uh, technologies are as I mentioned it zero knowledge um, the cryptography in general that all the protocols are public and the neural network itself that it is a quite known technology today so are there um... Yeah, let, let's ask the next, next question here. Um, in working with cryptography and biometric identification, I'm quite sure, and of course, applying it to the human node, I'm quite sure that there are uh, many challenges here. So um, for you, what is the biggest challenge now? What, you know, what is the, this mountain that we're trying to climb here that is uh, is going to be a big mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. You know that cryptography uh, works. Uh, for example, you, I have a, a message to share with you. Um, I We agree on some keys. So I protect the message and you can decipher the message with the key we agree upon on. 
But uh, in human node, we are working in a decentralized environment. So uh, like in blockchain. So make things uh, decentralized when we have a key, uh, a key management. It is a, a, a big challenge today. And also the neural network also in general works with the centralized uh, server where all the calculations um, are performed. But how can we work this in a decentralized environment so we don't depend on a server or a central key authority? In this in this sense, in human node, we are working hard in solving these challenges and um, specifically for the decentralized decentralization. So this is very uh, interesting topic and I'm really passionate about it. And I think that in human node, we are uh, uh, getting to a point where uh, we will be achieving this uh, in the near future. Dado, do you have any questions? I mostly have the questions about how do you envision it? Sorry, I didn't didn't catch you. So, so how, how do you how do you envision it? How do you envision the decentralization happening? I guess. Mm, well, mm, as I said, um, the neural network uh, specifics uh, not only for the training but also for testing uh, in an environment where we we are having one human one node uh, it is uh, very interesting because we are running a neural network in in a device that the user has so uh, protecting this and protecting the information I think that um, the cryptography is where mostly is helping us um, because uh, you know you can have uh, the most important thing here is how to protect the identity of the user. We don't want uh, a system where a user can easily impersonate from uh, one node to another. So. In this case, the decentralizations uh, help us to achieve this, and also the cryptography, uh, specifically zero knowledge proof. And this is uh, how I see it. Just off topic here for a moment. Um, what got you interested in cryptography in the first place? I mean, were you a math genius as a kid? I mean, math was something that I ran away from, but what about you? What what got you into cryptography? Not a genius, uh, really f far from that. But um, like uh, what differentiated me from the rest is that I really like it and enjoyed algebra in at the university. So this is uh, a branch of mathematics that not everyone loves because algebra in general, uh, it is, mm, you can see algebra like you have a, a set of identities uh, or entities in general, not only numbers and the relation between them. So how they perform each other, how you can uh, make operation with them. In particular, algebra, as you know from your school, is, uh, for example, then real numbers and addition and multiplication, for example. But in general, this um, algebra uh, goes um, beyond from that. And the entities are not only numbers, but then you have matrix and then you have uh, other stuff and how they are related to um, uh, each other and how they operate. It's very interesting. So I 
wanted to work with this, but uh, not only from the um, theoretical point of views, but uh, also from the practical point of view. And I get to a point where I learned that in cryptography, you can apply algebra in, to the real world. So this was what caught my attention from the cryptography. And then how were you dragged into the world of cryptography? Just... Well, then, uh, <laughs> yeah, I did a, <clears throat> a master thesis in, uh, uh, after my graduate, I did a, a, a master uh, in cryptography in number um, information theory. And then I, ha I had a, a master thesis in post quantum cryptography. And then that this was like, like seven years ago. And then I started working in blockchain technology that I think that is very interesting topic. Uh, not all from blockchain is good, but uh, the surrounding technology and uh, that it's always supporting is uh, cryptography. So I think there is a, a big future with cryptography, uh, decentralized uh, technologies. Oh, so, um, I mean, earlier you talked a little bit about uh, the challenges we are facing and um, uh, in a sense, our vision towards uh, where we want this to go. Uh, is there anything that you can talk about what you've uh, been working on recently concerning cryptography and uh, biometric identification? Yeah, of course. Um, um, for example, uh, uh, at the beginning, we thought that um, a good idea was uh, fully homomorphic, homomorphic encryption. That is a, a branch of the cryptography that allows to make calculations and preserve it to the encrypted space. And then we agree that this technology by itself, it's not uh, good for us because of the uh, time consuming um, the, the accuracy of this technology. And then we solve it uh, adding zero knowledge proof and, and all the technology that I, I already mentioned. But uh, right now, uh, our biggest challenge is to how to decentralize decentralize the calculations uh, in the neural network and how to manage the keys for for the user because uh, you have a key for the zero knowledge proof a key for the encryption and how to manage this in in a decentralized environment uh, goes to uh, in a way like this uh, concept from blockchain that is consensus but uh, in the biometric we don't have this kind of consensus like in blockchain so we need to develop something similar to this consensus where all can agree in in a state of the um, calculations so um once again, I'm not a cryptographer nor a scientist here, so my question might be off. So, in a, in essence, that is why most, um, let's say, uh, servers or services that are available right now are more in a centralized fashion because it's easier to deal with that issue. Yes, yeah, of course. If you uh, if you check your browser, for example. Uh, they have uh, an authority that issues the um, keys for the signatures, for example. And um, the browser uh, trusts in this uh, authority that he uh, is uh, issuing uh, valid um, signatures, for example. Uh, in our case, we don't have a, an authority, uh, a centralized authority we can trust uh, on 
and we need to figure out how to make things in a collective way. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, we're sorry. about 25. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Shan, you wanted to ask somebody questions, right? Yes, um, I, was, I was just going to see if anybody wanted to ask any questions at this point. If anybody has any questions about cryptography, biometric identification, now is a chance. Just raise your hand. And if not, people here are shy, Shen, as always. As always, okay. So, Dado, you're going to ask a question. Go ahead. Uh, well, I would say that, um, Rafa, could you try and explain? I'll fill us here. What approach uh, in uh, bioauthentication have you chosen to kind of deal with this um, problem? For the problem of the centralization versus decentralization, or well, both privacy versus transparency and decentralization yeah. versus centralization. Okay, yeah, for, for the privacy, um, I really like a concept that we explored uh, in the past, and we will have this concept added to the training in the future, and that is called um, differential privacy, that uh, in a sense is adding to the biometric data some noise, and when I say noise, is a perturbation in the the, the data, uh, controlled perturbation. Uh, so anyone that intercepts this data, uh, don't it is like uh, something he can't understand. And this differential privacy is uh, you have a threshold, um, a probabilistic threshold where you can move in, in between. Um, it, this is concept, this concept of differential privacy is very important uh, for the training because you may have uh, image use it uh, for you, you you may have the users has uh, add its uh, photos without uh, any hesitation because they will trust that this data won't be readable by anyone and you can try the model uh, actually we came with an idea about training the model using differential privacy and um, anyone can participate in the training in a decentralized way and for the training this was the best uh, way to do it i think and um, that was really good but uh, for the matching part and the testing this concept is not uh, really uh, suitable and then we need to needed to add uh, this zero knowledge proof and also the encryption schemes that allow us to have the privacy and also make the calculations uh, and so in, in this sense this is the, the technology we are using for protecting the privacy but uh, for the differential privacy for the sorry for the things about the decentralization we are developing a concept uh, we call collective authority that works like uh, the consensus in the blockchain, but uh, will be uh, specific for the biometric authentication. Can you precisely describe how uh, the collective authorities uh, works? Yeah, of course. Uh, this collective authority, we will we have um, a public key that is con uh, built by small pieces from public keys from all the nodes. And if you want to encrypt a piece of code, uh, anyone can encrypt it with this collective public key. But decryption uh, or 
getting back the 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 secret can only be performed if you, all the portion of the keys are present so uh, if you want to um, decrypt the message you need to all the nodes uh, contribute with its partial key all right and <clears throat> it, how do you like are all validators inside network conducting this operation or you're choosing like um, a number of them to do it yeah there, there will be a a, a number uh, not all the nodes will need to participate in, on this uh, and the number of these uh, nodes i think that will be related with some Byzantine fault tolerance uh, uh, properties. So you will need to have a, a, an amount that uh, proportionally represent the, the, the whole network, but also that have the, the number correct so they can make the, the, the coding and, and all, the, all that. So this number, it's really uh, a tricky question, uh, how to, to define this number, but I think that the Byzantine fault tolerance theory will help us to define the number. So uh, going back to differential privacy, um, what other approaches have, have you gone through, Rafa, while exploring the possibilities to make uh, biometrics uh, private and what limitations did you find in others so that differential privacy came on top yeah for, for example um, as I mentioned it uh, there is this concept of fully homomorphic encryption that uh, also perfectly perform this in a mathematical way but uh, computationally it is not feasible uh, because uh, in fully homomorphic encryption fully homomorphic encryption uh, you need to preserve the both operations addition and multiplication and what do i mean with preserving preserving means that uh, you have two spaces spaces space a and space b and in space uh, uh, the origin space is where the plain data is and the target space where the encrypted data so if you have an addition in the plain text you make the homomorphic encryption of that and then you want to perform the same addition but over the encrypted data and the operation are preserved in the sense that it is equal so when you evaluate the the addition of two um, values on the plain text this value is equal to make the addition over each of the um, encrypted values i hope that will be clear and this uh, what i mean with homomorphic and using this technology uh, for fully homomorphic encryption for addition and multiplication it's not uh, practical right now uh, all the schemes that we have to know um, until now are not practical and especially for uh, if we apply, apply them to to neural network because we in neural network you have uh, several operations and you need mm, mm, this operation really fast and the homomorphic encryption in that way uh, it, it is not fast enough for, for this and so it is not practical uh, in turn differential privacy for example it is very uh, fast and preserve also the privacy As you might very well know, um, the precision of fully homomorphic encryption has been quite uh, 
imprecise, but lately um, numerous teams have been making progress and creating uh, very precise working algorithms for fully homomorphic encryption. And I was wondering, uh, what threshold do you think, Rafa, should be crossed by the precision in fully homomorphic encryption for us to utilize it in human node? Well, I think that mm, when you see it uh, in a, this scheme only for uh, any encryption in general, uh, you can get some some pre precision that uh, make works in general. But for us, as we are uh, uh, using also a neural network, as I said, uh, I, I think that um, not only the precision, but uh, the uh, accuracy of the neural network over the encrypted data, it's also uh, an important um, value to take into account for using full homomorphic encryption. So I will say that uh, in a monument where using fully homomorphic encryption over a neural network uh, works uh, with a high accuracy, uh, high accuracy like mm, really close as the accuracy uh, uh, in plain neural network, so we can use it. But in any case, uh, we will be using a partial homomorphic encryption because, uh, for example, th there are two schemes that we are evaluating for using right now. Mm, one of them is Elgamal encryption that is uh, additively hom homomorphic encrypted uh, encryption scheme yeah. and also pi Pilier. Uh, this, I think that is a, a French name, Pilier encryption scheme that uh, we are considering to use and they provide partial homomorphic encryption. But I mean, if the accuracy in the fully homomorphic encryption was in place and the amount of time and necessary to kind of go over the encrypted data, uh, so we would definitely utilize fully homomorphic encryption instead of differential par privacy, or you would say that uh, we would still use differential privacy there? No, I think that um, if, the, if, if you have uh, an scheme that provides you with a, a really good accuracy on the neural network, then we definitely will be using it. Because it, it is the, the, theoretically, it is the best option right, right now, uh, the fully homomorphic encryption, but uh, not practical. So, but if we have, if we found uh, a, an encryption scheme, fully homomorphic, that provides us with a really high accuracy, then we definitely wanted to use it. Okay, so um, we're almost at the 40 minute mark. So once again, I'd like to open the floor to questions. If anybody has any questions they would like to ask, it doesn't have to be uh, detailed or scientific, um, but do feel free to raise your hand. I know you're shy, but this is your chance. Or you could also type it out. Ah, uh, good. Kenneth is uh, typing a question here. Oh, not yet. Let's see. Okay, while the questions are being typed in. Oh, okay. Uh, it says uh, a question from Rodolfo. Uh, what is the relationship between zero knowledge proofs and homomorphic encryption? There are, they are not um, 
quite related. Uh, but um, in homomorphic encryption, uh, as I explained, you want to preserve uh, the operations. Uh, why do we want to preserve the operation? Because you train a, a model and you want to run this model over encrypted data, so you want, don't want you the outcome of this uh, running will be over the encrypted data, and you can have uh, the solution for the neural network, All right? But in zero knowledge, um, you have a secret that you want that you don't want to share, and this secret. Uh, you don't want to reveal the actual secret. It is, uh, in, in a sense, uh, a similar problem. They they are built over a similar problem, but they are not uh, quite related. Uh, they we can say that they solve almost the same problem because in zero knowledge proof, uh, you want to make sure to another party that we can call the verifier uh, that you possess a secret or do you, or that you run uh, an operation carefully. So uh, in, in our case, uh, we want to prove another party that we run the neural network and the outcome was uh, correct and successful. This is done with zero knowledge. In zero knowledge, you have uh, several algorithms. You have a setup algorithm, a key generation, and also the generation of this proof. Uh, how to generate this proof? It is using some challenge that the verifier sends to you. And you, as a prover, solve this challenge and send the result and the verifier as the name say, verifies that this operation was run successfully. But in all those uh, uh, algorithms, the prover doesn't reveal, don't reveal the, the actual outcome, but uh, the proof of the outcome. Um, in homomorphic encryption, you want to perform uh, operations over encrypted data. Uh, let's say, for example, that you have uh, not only biometric, in, in our case it's biometric data, but for example, uh, in any other applications in machine learning, uh, if you have data from the hospital, for example, from insurance company about the conditions of the patients, but you don't want to reveal what the names or any other data of the patient you have. And then here, the homomorphic encryption, it's also a very good use case because you can train your machine learning model over the encrypted data and get uh, the same result uh, without decrypting the data. So in, in a sense, homomorphic encryption makes operation over encrypted data without decrypting and in zero knowledge, make the verification of a proof without revealing the actual outcome of the calculation. Okay, thank you. Um, next question, do we have any other questions? Feel free to raise your hand here so we can unmute you to ask the question or just type the question in the human node hub in telegram and whatever we can answer we will answer and if not while we're waiting dr victor do you have any other questions hello I was wondering, Rafa, so crypto biometrics for um, the network um, as in human vision is uh, like a 
crucial part in uh, structuring the whole infrastructure of the project, you see. And I was wondering, um, why do you think, before we kind of send on a quest to create um, decentralized and private biometrics, why hasn't other uh, like teams or companies tried to achieve this, or maybe they couldn't for some reason? Because it's hard. It is not an easy task, I think. Um, I think that um, not anyone are doing this because uh, it is really uh, challenging. Um, but also, I think that when we have the solution, and not the solution, but also uh, the actual implementation of this, and we run this, um, we will have a, a, a very robust uh, solution. But uh, in general, I think that um, it is not a, an easy task. Uh, so, you know, uh, doing the hard work, uh, it is not uh, so simple. But um, I am confident that we are building here something um, really good and secure and that really preserve the privacy because you can hear uh, uh, for example the very same telegram they say ah, we care about your privacy but mm, you know uh, i always mm, mm, put it in doubt because uh, it is always centralized it is always it can have a backdoor or, or anything and i think that we uh, we are really building here something that uh, really cares about the privacy of the user. And we are using the Kutinesh um, technology for achieving that. Well, what, what nature of this problem is that what makes it so hard compared to other, well, you know, cryptographic uh, challenges out there? Well, uh, uh, because we are running not only a network of users and like uh, a decentralized network of nodes, but also we are training a neural network model in a private way. We are also testing this model and the technology for that. And we, we now have pieces of that and we need to bring them together. So um, all the people that are working right now in neural network um, really doesn't care about privacy. This is um, a very recent um, concern in, in machine learning engineers because they have been working on neural network and developing models and, and all that. But um, right now is when they stop it and say, okay, how about, what about the privacy? And uh, on top of that, we are also um, building this over a decentralized environment. So um, running a neural network uh, in a decentralized environment is also something that uh, a few people are doing, not exactly for the myometric, but uh, for different application. So we are like taking um, the technologies that are being used, but bringing together for biometric. So it's about combining biometrics with the neural networks, with cryptography, uh, algorithms, and decentralization. Nice. Yes, it's correct. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm asking as if I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Victor, you want to say something? Oh yeah, I wanted to 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 have another answer on the previous question. Uh, actually, there are good biometric companies in the market who also work with the privacy, but you know there is a big difference between building something in the crypto market when you're 
uh, non-profit pursuing the dream of creating something 100% secure. And uh, on the other hand, there are companies who need profit right away in order to survive. And that is why they also fall into like, guys, uh, we need the cash flow right now. Let's do the easiest thing possible. And that's why any biometric company that wants to preserve the privacy of the computation or the privacy of uh, biometric data, they go with the easiest approach, which is uh, using like security by hardware, not security by pure math and cryptography, which is uh, the very hard way which nobody took before. Yeah, I think that um, as you all may know, um, data is money too. So uh, someone shared uh, in this chat earlier today that um, there is this company that is paying for uh, the user for sharing its biometric data. And we are not doing that. We are uh, uh, really caring about the privacy. Um, and I say it not only because I am part of the team, but uh, because I am convinced that um, the technology that we are using uh, really preserves the privacy of the user. So uh, it is a very interesting and a passionate topic. Okay, thank you. So we're about, uh, we have about 10 more minutes here. So I'd like to since unmute everybody here and um, if anybody has any questions could be about uh, today's topic or any other topic uh, feel free to ask um, it's it's all okay and also uh, one more reminder for our next fireside, if you have any specific topics that uh, you would like to hear about or hear more about, feel free to um, mention it here or write it down in the chat. So I guess the floor is open, hopefully. And does anybody have any questions or comments? Kenneth, do you happen to have any other questions? Oh, no, uh, not at this time. Uh, thank you so much for today's uh, presentation and information exchange. I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you. I'm You're glad you enjoyed always it. Always great to have you, Cal. I'm pleased to see you, really. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I enjoy our meetups and I look forward yeah. to them. That's great. You know, it's, um, I've been noticing you've been joining us uh, almost every time now and looking forward to seeing you here. So, well, thank you. I really appreciate it, Shannon. Welcome. I have a question for Kenneth. Kenneth, did you get uh, a lot of info from today's talk? Yes, I sure did. I really did. It was very informative and in depth and very knowledgeable. And some things I'll have to like restudy and look over, but I do get what was going on. And so I do appreciate the thoroughness uh, of everything that was explained. This is definitely a topic that I've been trying to learn more within my education and learning about, you know, uh, crypto, I can't pronounce the word, but yeah, it's been helpful because cryptography within itself is very valuable asset that I feel I need to dig more into and will help me in the process of blockchain development as a whole. And, you know, I've learned and learning 
blockchain development, but to be able to dive more into the cryptography aspect of things is something that I am passionate about learning and being able to contribute to. Thank you. And um, once again, just, uh, and can kind of feel free to answer this too. Do you have any other topics that you would like to hear more about for our next episode? Any topic is good as long as it's uh, crypto related and humanoid related and um, be happy to, to discuss. Well, I have Apologies a question for everybody, everybody, I guess. Um, oh, sorry. Well. Sorry, Victor, you want to say something? Yeah, I want to say can we also economics related, politics related, social related, and, uh, you know, humanities stuff. We can even talk about NFTs when it comes to we have nothing to speak about, <laughs> but I hope it will never happen. Rafa, do you utilize centralized biometrics in any way? Sorry, Dato, can you repeat? Are you using centralized biometrics in any way? Uh, no. Uh, well, um, in my phone, I have a phone that has uh, this authentication using biometric. And also I worked uh, in, um, before I entered to the blockchain environment, I worked in a technology that has this uh, uh, biometric and enter with uh, the fingerprint. Um, it was uh, um, for, for enter the office and all, uh, all that. But uh, in general, I haven't used any other um, biometric um, stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because you don't trust the centralized uh, services. Yeah, well, in, in general, I think that um, any any servers can be compromised. So um, I usually don't use, uh, but this is a, a personal um, um, belief that I don't use any uh, social network uh, or any kind in general because this is something personal and this is mostly because uh, i hardly trust in any uh, centralized uh, service that works with your data image or, or anything i think these are like hard to learn experiences um i i know it has nothing to do with it, but it's like I don't trust an autosave. Being from an older generation of computer users, you had to, and if you're a Mac user, hit command save every three minutes or you could lose everything you write. So even today with the developed autosave, I can't trust it. And, you know, every two sentences, I see myself hitting command S, command S, command S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everybody, it's about time here. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Rafa, for uh, giving us some time out of your extremely busy schedule. Yeah, my, my pleasure. I just wanted to, to close with um, this um, quote I heard some time ago and that uh, as soon as there is life, there is danger. And I would like to add to, add to that, that uh, as soon as you have information, you have the danger to compromise this information of any kind. So uh, the cryptography, I think, is a good way to, to preserve the information. And in particular, uh, the biometric data is something that you need to care about. It is not, um, uh, it is not something to give away to anyone. Um, I think that all of us, uh, regardless of our, our um, occupation, we need to take care of uh, our private data. So um, the privacy is something that um, many 
many, many out there doesn't care too much. So I think that it is a very important thing to preserve. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. thank you all and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you, Rafa. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Victor, and everyone else for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. And also, too, a uh, thing to look in, I I kind of felt the same way about NFTs. And I'm not talking about the art, and I'm not talking about the uh, music. The thing that I found interests me when it came to NFTs is utilizing it as a legal document for, like, invoices and business stuff. Uh, that's something that I've been uh, passionate about being able to uh, implement off of. So I do understand about the NFT though, but yeah, that might be something to check out is the, the good stuff, the business aspects of it, you know, and invoices. I found it helpful there. Well, how, how about something that you have to Yeah, we could go ahead. I said that something that we haven't seen that yet. I mean, business NFTs, uh, that are gone, please. Well, how about NFTs that are connected to your biometrics in a decentralized fashion, Kenneth? Very interesting. Awesome. Yeah, yeah we're kind of just uh, theorizing on this matter, but imagine creating some kind of digital art or like anything that is NFC compatible and then not attaching it to your public address, but attaching it to your biometrics and biology directly. So um, anyone would definitely know that something that you have created belongs to a certain person and it's, it's it can't be taken away really. Yep, can it would be Great to explore what you're doing, how we can uh, integrate it with our technologies with each other. Nice. Yeah, I will uh, reach out to you uh, and message you. I appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Okay, thank you. And everyone have a nice the rest of the day. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. All right.